Hi and welcome. I'm glad that you were able to join us and I don't believe that it's by accident that you're here uh, but that God wants to speak to you and that he wants to impart his wisdom and his truth into your life. You know when I was growing up in high school I had a group of friends that I was very close with and we did everything together and you know we would share our clothes, we would stay up late talking and I felt like we were there for each other at very important, critical times in our lives. But somewhere along the line, you know, something went wrong. And I'm not even quite sure what happened, but we basically had a falling out. And I remember that there was uh, one person that I was really close to, that you know, he was like my best friend. And uh, something created us for that happened that made us become distant and we stopped talking to each other and we basically treated each other like strangers and I remember that period in my life was very dark and I remember that I was trying to seek you know answers to questions that I was going through like God why did you put me through this or why is this happening to me and I remember even though I was lonely at uh, that time it made me turn to God and help me in my relationship with him. And so it taught me that when God takes things away, uh, he replaces it with more of himself. And that's something that we'll see in the life of David as we look at Psalm 109. Psalm chapter 109, verses 1 through 15. My God, whom I praise, do not remain silent. For people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. With words of hatred they surround me. They attack me without cause. In return for my friendship, they accuse me. But I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my friendship. Appoint someone evil to oppose my enemy. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him be found guilty, and may his prayers condemn him. May his days be few. May another take his place of leadership. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children be wandering beggars. May they be driven from their ruined homes. May a creditor seize all he has. May strangers plunder the fruit of his labor. May no one extend kindness to him or take pity on his fatherless children. May his descendants be cut off, their names blotted out from the next generation. May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord. May the sin of his mother never be blotted out. May their sins always remain before the Lord, that he may blot out their name from the earth. You know, one of the things I love about Psalm is that it's so real and it's very raw. And that, you know, a lot of times the authors never hold anything back. And they basically say everything that they're thinking and feeling uh, uh, in, the, in the words that they pen. And so we see here that whatever they're experiencing, they bring it to God the Father. And so uh, the Lord is the one that uh, absorbs all the words and all the impact that these words are portraying. But God always remains the focus of their praise. Uh, that's something that never changes in the book of Psalm. It's always the key focus and center point of all their writings, and it's always directed towards God. Uh, sometimes it's filled with joy and exaltation. Um, others, other times it's filled with pain and questions and about their enemies and what they're enduring. Uh, asking why they're going through certain circumstances. And in this particular psalm, uh, David is praying that the Lord will take vengeance on his enemies. And as David is crying out, as he's praying, that God would not stay silent, uh, but that he would be on his side. He's asking for some sort of confirmation, saying, God, uh, be with me. God, show me that you are with me every step of the way. And so, David is confident in his own innocence as, as he's referencing to his enemies. 
And so he writes that they had lied about him and that they had said evil things about him that weren't warranted. So I believe that's one of the things as Christians that we need to be careful of in terms of how we use our words. And so it reminds me a lot of the New Testament in the book of James and how it talks about we need to tame our tongue and make sure that we don't allow it to harm or use it for evil. And for myself, being a pastor of a small church, uh, it's something that I had to wrestle with. And, you know, we were having a men's gathering. And so I was having uh, people go around and share uh, something about their lives. And as this one person was sharing, uh, I made a side remark, uh, just trying to be funny. And I remember uh, one person who was there, they said, you know, Pastor, I didn't realize that you make such uh, snarky remarks. And snarky meaning very critical, uh, very um, attacking. And so, you know, I was just joking, but when I was thinking back on what he said, it really affected me. As I was, you know, doing my devotion, I was thinking about the words that I said to that person. And though it was meant to be a joke, I can see how my words can be interpreted the wrong way. And so that's something that we need to be aware of, that we should not let our words just come out loosely, uh, but that we should have a tight rein upon our lips because we know that though it can be used for good, that it can also be used for evil. And so uh, let's not let down our guards when it comes to how we talk or how we share with other people. And so that's an area that Satan would love to uh, seep into and put his influence in our lives. Uh, and so uh, let's make sure that even our jokes are not done in a coarse manner that uh, dishonors God. And so uh, we see here that David tried to handle things the right way. Uh, he doesn't retaliate or do uh, the same things to his enemies, but instead uh, he tries to show love to his accusers. Uh, can imagine how difficult this must have been for David to bite his tongue and not lash out and treat them just as he was being treated. Uh, so we need to fight against our own flesh and not allow that to take control over our lives. Uh, and so rather than taking matters into our own hands, what we're called to do is we ought to pray. And as we pray, as we take it up to the Lord in prayer, uh, we see that God will replace our you know, anxiety. God will replace the hurts and all the things that were said to us and replace that with His love, with His peace, with His comfort, and with His guidance. And so uh, let's learn to take that up to the Lord. And it's, it really impresses me when I look at the character of David and how he handles this very situation that he could have easily become uh, just like them and treated them as he was being treated or just for a moment uh, pretend to be a non-Christian and speak to them in ways that could harm them and hurt them so that they would know how he felt. Uh, but rather, he showed his dependence on God by praying and letting go of his pride. You know, one of the hardest things for us to do is um, absorbing things that un are unwarranted, things that we feel that are undeserving to us. So can we learn to put our trust, can we learn to put our faith in God in every circumstance? Uh, so let's not let our human emotions get the best of us, but let's learn to fight against our flesh. Let's learn to not let our emotions be in control, but let's learn to put God in control because when we let that happen, uh, we see that how God can guide our steps and that he will lead us into his presence and before his glorious throne. So let's take heart and do that together. And so when it comes to our enemies, when it comes to people who hurt us or talk bad about us or gossip about us, how do we handle those kind of situations? Uh, that's something that we need to ask ourselves. And so as we look at the example of David, um, that he took the high road, 
Uh, and so rather than retaliating, rather than giving them a taste of their own medicine, he doesn't do that. Rather, he showers them with love. And most of all, and the most important thing is that David learned to give this to God. And that's something that we need to take to heart. Uh, that so often we want to take things into our own hands and see how justice should be done through our own eyes. Uh, but too often when we try to do that, uh, bad things will happen. Uh, so let's learn to be prayerful people. Let's learn to trust uh, that God is in control and that He knows what's best for us. Let us pray for that. Uh, Father, we thank You, Lord, uh, that You are in control of our lives. Uh, we thank You, O oh God, that You know what's best for us. And so we just pray that we will learn to forgive our enemies, that we will not harbor bit, uh, bitterness, but that we would really learn to show grace uh, as we have been shown grace. And so we just thank You, God, for all that You have done, and we just want to give You the honor and praise. We thank you, and God, you have been so good to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the program.